Greetings, everyone, and welcome to our Kelly Appeal TV. Today, we're discussing the federal Chicago trial in Chicago for the child pornography and obstruction trial. And CNN has reported on August 16th that a jury has been selected and sworn for the Chicago trial. The jury is made up of four men and eight women. There are six alternate jurors, five women and one man. So there's a pool of more than 100 jurors that was questioned by U.S. District Judge Harry Lyndon Weber beginning Monday. Jennifer Bonjean, an attorney for Kelly, took issue with prosecutors' decisions to challenge potential jurors, claiming prosecutors often struck jurors who were black and called it a pattern that was quite disturbing. We're going to put that on the back burner because that is a part of what we're going to eventually appeal if we need to. It's now that is imbalanced, you know. Um, so assistant attorney Janice App Appentang said this was not the case and pointed to the fact that prosecutors did not put forth challenges for, for multiple is just another example of an effort to violate not only the jurors first amendment rights, but also Mr. Kelly's right to a jury of his own peers. Bonjean said in court opening statements are expected to begin Wednesday morning. R. Kelly removed, um, you know, I feel that to remove the is a understatement. It is to say that, we want to make sure that something happens in this case. However, there are other nationalities that love Robert Sylvester Kelly. So they're not going to be able to do what they intend to do to crash this down. You know, um, of course, they do take on the characteristics and the values of each juror. And I get that. So I also see that this is going to be a problem. Now, the other things we talked about yesterday, as far as, you know, making sure that everyone has their day in court, that's different. But this today, striking down more black jurors than white is a way for them to get, see, they're paranoid. Prosecution in the government is extremely paranoid. And in this paranoia, what's taking place is there is a subliminal attack upon how they would do it. So they're assuming that if you get black jurors on this panel, then what's going to happen is he's going to get off because no matter what, African-Americans are going to stick with each other. But they love the comment. They love the comment that black on black crime was the biggest thing in the world. But R. Kelly is bringing black people together again, once again, in multiple droves. So I feel that at this point, picking of the jurors, um, the African-American jurors that, you know, is, you know, is, is not right. Period, point blank, it's not right. And that's something that should be appealed. It should be appealed. Um, because... As we know, he's not going to get a true fair trial, as everyone says. OK, since we know this is the case, our eyes are awake now and we see what we need to do. And the only way that I can see any of this coming to fruition for him is through appeal. Again, we have not heard the jury's comments, what their deliberations are. We are far ahead of the game. But basing it on what is being done through prosecution, our, our eyes should be there, but our hearts should be what the jury is going to deliberate. And we will not know until the very end of the trial. I also want to bring something out today. Uh, let me see here. I want to bring something out today that Daddy Lolo sent me and I did tell him that I would definitely 
put it out here for everyone to hear. Um, celebrating our Kelly Facebook page about an hour ago or 11 hours ago, I'm sorry, said that Daddy Lolo, along with others, have been walking the streets of Chicago ever since charges first came about dealing with R. Kelly. Some people have went in another direction for self-monetary gain or whatever the cause may be. Some have stayed and remained focused. Wait a minute. Okay, so um, when when I was reading it, um, let me see. so it says, I myself, along with others, this is Daddy Lolo Brister, have been walking the streets of Chicago ever since charges first came about dealing with R. Kelly. Some people have went in another direction for self-monetary gain or whatever the cause may be. Some have stayed and remained focused on the main task at hand. I thank everyone that stayed focused. Victory is near. I promise you to all the real R. Kelly fans around the world, no matter where you are, near or far. Can I please get a free R. Kelly? Free R. Kelly. So, you know, people are still moving in a direction that says that there is going to be success oh, in this. Um, there's going to be success in the situation you do have people coming on, you know, saying, you know, their derogatory statements. It's okay because what I know, I know. And I know that nothing ha can come about this right at this moment, regardless of what, except for when those 12 men and women go into that deliberation box and sit down together as a team and make a situation um, noticeable. Um, based on a reasonable doubt, based on reasonable doubt. So today I want to look at the trial handbook and it's talking about the eight stages of trial. I want to go over that, but the voir dire examination has been put on the motion, um, on, um, R. Kelly's motion. So this is what the void deer examination is about. So I want you to get a little comfortable with this word because that's what's going on today and Wednesday's deliberation with uh, what's going on in the courtroom. I may not be able to be there in Chicago, but I do know the concepts and the historical practices of what the criminal justice system does during a federal trial and it never changes. It's always been there since the beginning of time. All right, let's listen to the voir dire examination. This is what Judge Lynn Weber is going to tell the jury today during deliberation. Okay. The VOIR dire examination. To begin a jury trial, a panel of prospective jurors is called into the courtroom. This panel will include a number of persons from whom a jury will be selected to try the case. In criminal trials, alternate jurors may be chosen to take the place of jurors who become ill during the trial. The panel members are sworn to answer questions about their qualifications to sit as jurors in the case. This questioning process is called the voir dire. This is an examination conducted by the judge and sometimes includes participation by counsel. A deliberately untruthful answer to any fair question could result in serious punishment to the person making it. So, the voir let's talk about that. Those black jurors that may have been um, questioned, may have put up a red flag that they were going to say he was not guilty no matter what. Not to literally say that that was the reason i don't know i wasn't there during you know the process of questioning but if they had done that 
and referring the actual process, they're going to be picking out. The judge is there sitting there to pick out contempt. So his goal is to make sure that these people are truly going to be to listen to everything and make that ultimate decision in a honest type way. And yes, I could never be on the jury of the panel because I would find him not guilty, period. I don't care what I heard. I don't care what it is. He's not guilty from the door. So that right there would make me uh, unable to be unbiased towards prosecution's information. No matter if I heard that it was what it was to the highest degree, it would be difficult for me to say, no, that's, that's propaganda. He's using, they're using this against him because he's black. They're, they're, they're doing this stuff. They're double jeopardizing him. These women are hungry and all that. So they're trying to get someone who will not be like that just so the trial can be heard in a productive way. And this is the process of Vidir. Okay, let's finish. I hope it doesn't go back to the beginning. Okay, yeah, I think it will. So let's see. Process is called the voir dire. This is an examination conducted by the judge and sometimes includes participation by counsel. A deliberately untruthful answer to any fair question could result in serious punishment to the person making it. The voir dire examination opens with a short statement about the case. The purpose is to inform the jurors what the case is about and to identify the parties and their lawyers. Now, we don't know how the case is going to be presented by the judge. So I don't know if he's going to go based on the 2008 trial at first and then break it down to, you know, the 2022 obstruction or if he's going to go straight to the obstruction and then allow or strike testimony relative to 2008. But whatever it is he does, the opening arguments is going to set the law to the jury that Lennon Weber is going to say, do not go beyond this. This is all I want you to do is A, B, C, and D. And that's going to be extremely difficult to a person who ultimately already believes he's not guilty. Rob is not guilty. So this is what I'm saying. We have no idea what the jury's verdict is going to be. So to sit there and say that he's being biased and all this and all that, it that don't mean anything. What means the most is what the jury is going to deliberate based upon the testimony and the information that's being presented in this trial. That's it. So they're sticking to specifically the facts. So we may think it's, it's unjust, but watch it, watch how everything plays out. Don't judge it yet because this is judgment of, from emotion. So this Vadir examination is going to um, inform the juries of what the case is about and to identify the parties and their lawyers. Bonjean is there. So she's not going to allow, she's going to object to anything that could be misleading to the jury. So trust and know this woman has his back. Let's finish. Questions are then asked to find out whether any individuals on the panel have any personal interest in the case or know of any reason why they cannot render an impartial verdict. The court also wants to know whether any member of the panel is related to or personally acquainted with the parties, their lawyers, or the witnesses who will appear during trial. Other questions will determine whether any panel members have a prejudice or a feeling that might influence them in rendering a verdict. Any juror having knowledge of the case should explain this to the judge. Having knowledge should explain this to the judge. So obviously the ones that have been struck, I'm not saying it was the African-American people who were questioned in becoming a juror or not. But what I'm saying is that 
these individuals are going to be questioned and they are going to have to explain if they have any connection. If they have any connection whatsoever, they're going to be struck. So we may call it a black on black or we, it, it may be something that is emotionally tied to this. But the reality of the legality to the concept is if you were African-American and were asked the question of sensitive issue in order to make sure you're not in contempt of where you go to jail, you go to prison because you are not going to be able to be unbiased. You have to be excluded. And so if there's love in the black culture for Robert Sylvester Kelly, could this be the best thing to prevent anyone from being in contempt? And so they're going to take the ideas of individuals who may not be as, you know, into the music of R. Kelly as many of us have or many of us are. So I want you to pay attention to that. So anything that may influence them in rendering a verdict at the end. So he's saying, I'm looking for 12 good people who will look at this from both points of view and not be biased or prejudiced or unbiased or unprejudiced. Like, you know what I mean? Meaning that there's a balanced fulcrum. And when I mean unbiased and unprejudiced, that means that you're not going to take the left, the left side so extreme that you're not going to be able to know that you're overstepping the boundaries and you're overlooking the things that could very well, you know, find him guilty because you're so emotionally attached. So parties on either side may ask the member of the panel to be excused. So this is what happened. Prosecution asked that these people that CNN said were struck down was struck because of some exemption or something that they saw that would eventually be a challenge in the case. A person may be challenged for cause if the examination shows he or she might be prejudiced. The judge will excuse an individual from the panel if the cause raised in the challenge is sufficient. There is no limit to the number of challenges for cause, which either party may make. The parties also have a right to a certain number of challenges for which no cause is necessary. These are called peremptory challenges. Each side usually has a predetermined number of peremptory. 5. Challenges. The peremptory challenge is a legal right long recognized by law as a means of giving both sides some choice in the makeup of a jury. Jurors should clearly understand that being eliminated from the jury panel by a peremptory challenge is no reflection upon their ability or integrity. Right. And this in is some what... courts, the peremptory challenges are made openly in the parties on either side um, may ask that a me So, yeah. So I remember in my trial, it was weird because there was this one man that came out and said, I don't believe in a system at all. I believe the system is corrupt. And I believe that we should be, uh, uh, America should be done with the criminal justice system. And yeah, this is how I'm going to rule. And he was kicked off of my juror, jury. And I, we wanted him. We wanted him because he was one of the ones that were going to break this down for me. And so... Judge Diapolito would not allow it to happen. He wouldn't allow it to happen. So they struck him for whatever their reasons. So the parties have a right to a certain number of challenges for which no cause is necessary. They're called um, preemptory. And in some courts, the preemptory challenge are made opening openly in the hearing of the jury and others they may they are made from the jury list out of the juror's sight. So that's what's going on. And then now the solemn oath. This is what I want you to pay attention to because any juror that is prejudiced or biased, we're going to find out. We're going to know because people are going to be there watching everything. So this oath is what they're going to have to take in order to make sure that this is done decently and in order. If we see anything different, 
of this, don't think Bonjean is not going to take note and object and put this into her appeal status. So here's the juror's solemn oath. The juror's solemn oath. After the voir dire is completed, the jurors selected to try the case will be sworn in. The judge or the clerk will state to the jury, Members of the jury, you will rise, hold up your right hands, and be sworn to try this case. The jurors then rise and hold up their right hands. The jurors face the judge or the clerk who is to administer the oath. That official slowly, solemnly, and clearly repeats the oath. The jurors indicate by their responses and appraised hands that they take this solemn oath. Jurors not wishing to take an oath may request to affirm instead of swear. In some districts, the jury is sworn upon the Bible and not by uplifted hand. Now let's see this. Jurors not wishing to take an oath may request to affirm because sometimes in people's religion, they choose not to swear or they choose not to whatever their wording is. That wording is extreme to their belief. So that's where that comes in. Now we're going to go to the eight stages of trial. This is what happens after the jury has been uh, given the rules, the guidelines, the instruction of the um, first part of what we're going to do within the court with Robert's information, the newest information, and how they're to listen to the rules and guidelines of the trial. Here goes the eight stages of trial, and then we're going to be done today. We'll do more tomorrow. The eight stages of trial. The trial proceeds when the jury has been sworn. There are usually eight stages of trial in civil cases. They are. The lawyers present opening statements. Sometimes the opening statements on behalf of one or more parties are omitted. 6. The plaintiff calls witnesses and produces evidence to prove its case. The defendant may call witnesses and produce evidence to disprove the plaintiff's case and to prove the defendant's claims. The plaintiff may call rebuttal witnesses to disprove what was said by the defendant's witnesses. Closing arguments are made by the lawyer on each side. The judge instructs or charges the jury as to the law. The jury retires to deliberate. The jury reaches its verdict. During the trial, witnesses called by either side may be cross-examined by the lawyers on the other side. Throughout the trial, the judge may be asked in the presence of the jury to decide questions of law. Usually these questions concern objections to testimony that either side wants to present. Occasionally, the judge may ask jurors to leave the courtroom briefly while the lawyers present their legal arguments for and against such objections. The law requires that the judge decide such questions. A ruling by the judge does not indicate that the judge is taking sides. He or she is merely saying, in effect, that the law does, or else does not, permit that question to be asked. It is possible that the judge may decide every objection favorably to the plaintiff or the defendant. That does not mean the case should be decided by the jury for the plaintiff or the defendant. Even where the judge decides every objection favorably to the plaintiff or the defendant, the jury should maintain its objectivity and base its verdict strictly upon the testimony and exhibits received in evidence at trial. So even if the judge misleads by speaking um, personal you know, beliefs or whatever to try to sway the jury. Again, the jury has a mind of its own. It's its own entity separate from the judge, because if the judge, if Leonard Weber had the power to make the decision on his own, they would not need the jury. They would have a judge as the jury because that was what was offered to me as well. But I took jury. Okay. So just know that the hope of these 12 people will go beyond what media and social media is saying about all this craziness and get to the reality of whether this is true or not, whether it is true in their eyes. And I truly believe that when they look at the evidence and everything that's going to be presented, because we have no idea what is going to be presented at this moment. We just know what motions have been filed and are on the books that has either been struck from the testimony or allowed in. That's all we know. And in knowing that, 
Maybe the juries may say, well, why wasn't this brought in? So we can't make a clear and decisive decision because everything was one sided. I mean, that could happen as well. So it continues to make it substantial based upon just the deliberations that is going to take place. So what we need to do is just sit back and observe what goes on in the testimony and in the trial. Will they believe Lisa Van Allen? Will they believe Deronda Pace? Will they believe why they went on vacation and chose not to come back to uh, trial? Why didn't they, why weren't they subpoenaed to the point where they had no other choice but to come back? Rolanda, you know, and, and, and Rolanda, Geronda, all of them, you know, why weren't they given, and the, and the jury could be looking at it this way. Why weren't they, uh, mandated to have a, a Zoom conversation to where something was just put on the record? All these, all these questions could come up in the jurors' minds to where they will not be able to reach a verdict of guilt because there's not enough evidence once again. So for all the naysayers and the haters and all these people in the background talking about, oh, I feel so sorry for him. I think this is it. No, stop hating on him like that. You either have your faith or belief or get off the channel and go over there in the corner somewhere and decide for yourself with, with the other naysayers. But don't come in here putting little pixie dust amounts of little salty hating concepts to something that is not even deliberated on yet. There's not even a testimony yet. And everybody talking, you know, the majority of people that come on here with the hate, no oh God, I hope he doesn't get another 30 years. We'll stop saying it and he won't. Period, point blank. Don't put it in your mindset. Or just sit back and just observe. That's what I'm doing. The jury takes an oath to decide the case upon the law and the evidence. The law is what the presiding judge declares the law to be, not what a juror believes it to be or what a juror may have heard it to be from any source other than the presiding judge. The evidence that jurors consider consists of the testimony of witnesses and the exhibits admitted in evidence. What evidence is proper for the jury to consider is based upon the law of evidence. Now, it's based upon the law of evidence. And we're going to stop right there. Um, I have to get ready for work here, but I do want you to know that we're going to talk about the arguments of counsel because that will be coming up later um, and how it's going to go down in the, according to the American Bar Association, how it's going to go down with the testimony. So right now we're not there yet. So I'm going to stop here today and just let you know. You have a lot of people that are um, looking at this as a downfall for Robert. And I'm beginning to see a pattern of disrespect that's kind of coming in from a real nice kind of way. And I'm here to tell you, I see what you're doing. I see how you're planting the seed of doubt within subscribers who come to this channel looking for the expectation of what the truth truly is. And I'm telling you right now that as you do this, I watch how you're putting your words together, even in legality terms. And it doesn't make sense based on what, what words you put together for me, because I know what the definitions of these words are. And I know that what you're doing is trying to sound intellectual, but in this intellectual sounding, you're misinterpreting words. You're misinterpreting words. When you misinterpret words, I will break it down or I will not respond at all. So if you see me not responding, to certain things, even in text, subscribers. I need you to understand that we need not worry about that right now. Let's stay focused on exactly what I'm speaking, exactly what I'm speaking, because everyone has their opinion and their opinion 
is based upon emotion, not upon the way that the criminal justice system always handles its cases. And anyone who has been part of the criminal justice system, whether intellectually in school or in the real world of, you know, being incarcerated. Okay. You know what goes on, but it's also based upon your emotional ability to understand what went on when you went through it or when someone near you went through it. You as the observer, many of us can sit back and experience the same situation in 20,000 different ways. So the best way is number one, don't get caught up in their system. So I hope the R. Kelly case of 2021, 21st century case is teaching all of us to be mindful of the things we do. You know, I was just talking to one of the subscribers and now, you know, close person that I connect to on YouTube. I was just speaking with the, with the definition of laundering. And we talked about the laundering of say, um, a person who pays someone to do something that blows up. So say for instance, if, you know, we use the, the example of Ja Rule. You have Ja Rule here with $10,000 to start his Murder Inc. Um, you know, music industry. Well, you have a dope boy over here that got $500,000, don't know what to do with it. It's just stacked in a wall. He uses that money to make Ja Rule more feasible to the world. Well, the IRS is watching where Ja Rule is getting his money from. So then Ja Rule blows up. All of a sudden he has top notch, you know, equipment. He's, you know, putting all of his investment into his music. Well, the laundering comes in when he begins to make not 500,000, but 5 million. He pays back 500,000 to the dope boy whose money was dirty. Now you laundered it up, you made it clean, you doubled up the cost and you gave it back or could possibly be investing. So he could be making a thousand dollars a week off of what you're doing for the rest of his life because he gave you 500,000 to start. So these are, are areas of law that where some people will feel like anybody can give a donation. Yes, true. And this is why I brought up the whole cash app. I'm a bless you concept because anybody can give you money, but you better know where that money comes from. This is what I tell my new entrepreneurs. Know where your startup funds are coming from. If you get it from a grant, you better report that to the IRS. Okay. Because I mean, God, the way that the world is going, hell, the IRS can be getting the dope man's money and investing it into PPP loans. I don't know. This world is a trip. <laughs> but the point I am making people is to let's be mindful and observant to how the system is going to bring the steak dinner to us. Bill Cosby said it best on one of his um one of his uh segments. So someone brought some brought him a dinner and he was like, "Well, what is this?" Denise, Denise brought him a dinner and it was all slopped up and everything on top of each other. He said, Denise, it's the presentation of what you give. If you give a steak dinner, okay, if you throw stuff together on a porcelain plate and give it to someone, they would rather probably have a steak dinner with the potatoes separate from the steak, nice juicy steak and some vegetables and bread on a garbage can lid. 
and they would respect the fact that you took the time to put it together the way you do. It's the presentation. I don't know if I would eat off the garbage can lid, but I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's brand new. I don't know. But the point is the presentation is everything. So let's allow government to show forth their presentation before we just put in our manifestation of what they're going to do. Maybe if the entire world said that this system will do him correctly, maybe it will happen because it's the belief system, see. And anyone who have manifested anything in their lives, they understand what I'm talking about. So thank you so very much for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to this podcast. It was a great conversation yesterday. That video went to my Kansas students and I definitely let them know to read the live comments. So please be mindful. If you don't know the terminology in which you're speaking, please make sure before you start to speak, you use terms that you understand because what they do is they just break it down where, where this individual that said this, this, and this, and they're doing it in a classroom setting. They're going to the words that you speak, the legal terms you do speak, and then they're plugging it together, trying to see what you're saying. And we're finding that a lot of people are just copy, cut, copying and pasting terminology just to have something to say in a chat. Please realize that. Um, that's why you're not getting the response that you should get, you know, so let's be mindful of that because this is a legal channel. Um, maybe that would work over in someone's channel who's gossiping about, you know, Lisa Van Allen that could work there, you know, and you could sound very intelligent on that channel because they're not going to go and look and, and try to decide if this person really knows what they're talking about because we're trying to help create precedent law that is going to affect the outcome of the appeal process for Robert Sylvester Kelly. So know that this is what's happening here on this channel. So with that, as always, keep it 100 and we will see you next time.